me to talk a little bit about dog first aid. So one of the things that you want to make sure that you do with your dog is that if your dog has gotten hurt, you're going to want to put a muzzle on your dog. Because even though they can be the sweetest dog at home, when they're in pain, they can, they can lash out. So there's two things that you can do. If you've purchased yourself a doggy first aid kit from somewhere, many times they come with a muzzle inside. So you want to practice with your dog in a non-emergency situation to put the muzzle on so that when it does come to an emergency situation, they're used to it. So one way that you can practice that, you sit down. Yay. Is to take a treat and put it through the opening, then offer it to your dog and slide the muzzle on up on their nose and then buckle it back here. Okay. Now this is my dog Drizzle. He's seven years old and we've practiced on multiple occasions putting a muzzle on. Now thankfully we've never been in a situation where we've needed it. I know, it's all right. But he knows, he knows it's not going to be a bad thing. So that's one thing if you're at home and you have that. If you're out somewhere and you don't have a muzzle with you, you can use almost anything to create your own muzzle. You can use your belt, you can use your dog's leash, you can use a tie. If you happen to have an emergency kit in your car, you can use like an ace bandage. A sock. A sock, something that's long. What you're gonna do in that situation is you're gonna take this bandage and I've unraveled it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come under his nose. Hey, you're cute. On top and twist. I'm gonna come down under his nose and twist, and then I'm gonna tie it behind his, his, his head like that. So that's a makeshift muzzle. And again, even though he's biting at a little bit, this is something that we have practiced. So he is more comfortable having it on. Like I said, thankfully we've never had an emergency scene situation, but if we do, we know how to do it. So once you've got your dog muzzled, then you can kind of assess what you need to do. You may at some point need to take your dog's temperature. So if you're at home, you want to dedicate a thermometer to your dog. Okay? You don't want to use the same one for the people as the dogs, okay? Because this is going to go up their butt. Now, I'm not going to do this to him today because there's so much going on. But again, we've practiced putting this in his bottle. And then he knows that I can put it there and I can take his temperature and he's not going to squirm too much. The dog's temperatures are a little bit higher than people. A normal dog temperature could be anywhere from 102 degrees to 102.8. So that's something worth knowing. Even if you don't remember the exact numbers, but knowing that it's supposed to be more than a person, if that's normal. Now extremes of that, anything under 100 degrees or anything above 104 is definitely considered an emergency. Okay. One of the things that you might need to look at is you might need to look at their mucous membranes, like if they're dehydrated. One of the places you can do that is their eye. So if you pull down a little bit and look at the whites of their eye, if it's an unusual color than what your dog normally has, again, it's good to know what your dog's normal looks like so then you know what not normal looks like. So that's one way to tell if it's um, like a brick red or blue. That's definitely an emergency situation. Something else that you may need to look at is what we call capillary refill time, okay? And that's like, if you look at your own nail, you press down on your nail, it goes white, and you let go. When it comes back to color, that's how long it takes the blood to get back to that area. Well, dogs have all of this wonderful fur. How are we supposed to know where to look? Well, we look in their mouth. So again, you want to get your dog used to you handling them by their mouth, so that they understand that it's not something that you're not necessarily trying to hurt them. Now he has a little he has a little bit of black in him on his lip. So when I look at him, I'm gonna look at the pink part. I'm gonna press it and then I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna watch how fast does that come back to color. Okay? So that's another way to assess if there's something wrong with your dog. It tells you how well the blood is flowing. 
Bobo, you're doing such a good job. You're doing such a good job. Something else that you want to look at is you might need to take your dog's heart rate. So on people, we generally tell people to do it at your wrist or do it at your neck. Again, dogs have all this wonderful fur. So a really great place to do it is actually right where their back leg meets their body. So if you can get your dog to lay on their side, can I have a spotter? There we go. Excellent boy. Good job. In their thigh, right where their leg meets their body, there's a big artery there. It's called your femoral artery. Okay? You can find that and you'll want to feel the, the pulse. And then just like you do with humans, once you find it, you hold and you count. Now you can count, you count it and then you kind of want to watch a clock to see how long it takes in one minute, how many beats that you have. Okay? Now dogs can have a heart rate in normal of 30 to 70 a minute. So again, it's worth knowing what your normal is so that you can know what's not normal for your own dog. Good boy, you're doing a good job. You're yeah. doing a good job. All right, boy. The other thing that you want to look at is you want to look at their breathing rate. How fast are they breathing? Now in a stressful situation and in a situation like this, he's a little bit warm right now. He's gonna be more in the panting mode than breathing. So, when your dog is relaxed at home, you'll want to look at your dog, watch their chest rise and fall, and count how many in a minute is normal for them, okay? If the dog is panting, they can sometimes pant up to 200 times in a minute because it's just real fast. They're just trying to get, they're just trying to get that air in there. Okay? So again, knowing what your dog's normal is will help you know what's not normal for them. So, if your dog has a cut somewhere, you're going to want to cover that cut. And you can do that by taking some of the different pads and sponges that are available at your regular Rite Aid, Walmart, CVS, all like that. Make sure you have some of those. So you can do a couple different things because most, more than likely what you're trying to do is you're trying to just get your dog to a point where you can get them to the vet. So if they're actively bleeding, you want to make sure that that's covered because you don't want them bleeding all over your car. Okay. So one thing that you can do is depending on how large the the wound is, this particular product is called Coflex. It's what we call a stick to yourself bandage. So you want to pull some off for yourself. And stay here. Where's my scissors? So having a second person is always helpful because they can be giving you treats while you're doing something, they can be doing all sorts of different things. So you want to take your, your pad, pull it out, put it on, on the area, and then you're going to work. We're going to do our next raffle here in about five minutes, so make sure you purchase those tickets. Once again, they are $2 for one, 10 for 10, and 30 for $20. The best bang for your buck. So come on over, see these young ladies over here volunteering their time. Plenty of great gift baskets available, and we also have Detroit Pistons basketball tickets available as well. Hi. And then you want to wrap it around. And again, depending on how big it is, you might have to go up, you might have to go down. And then what I always recommend is taking tape, don't use those little alligator clips because you don't want that to poke through and poke your dog. Just take a little piece of tape and tape that end down.
Alright, well, you guys get the idea and take it out. Okay.
Schultz again.